And welcome everybody to another edition of Georgia Alabama Sports Live. I'm Thrift Behringer alongside my partner in crime, Richard Holdridge. I thought you almost forgot your name right there, Richard. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for tuning in with us tonight. We have a lot of stuff we're going to be going over. A jam packed show. As always, we are presented by Sports Visions, and you can listen to me and DJ Jones on the Sports Visions Radio slash Facebook Live show every Monday and Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. on 92.1 Smooth R&B, 92.1.com, Sports Visions Radio app, and the Sports Visions Facebook page. We got a lot, like I said, we're going to be getting into today. We're going to be announcing where we're going to be at on Friday. We got another special announcement about a new show we're going to have for each game we do on Friday night, the premier game of the week. We're also going to add a little flair to it, um, and we're excited about We'll talk about that momentarily. On tonight's show, we are giving predictions for every Tri-City area team. We're going to give a season prediction. We're not going to go game by game. Like I said last week, that would take a lot of time. We're going to give a what we think the record's going to be at the end of the year, trying to predict state championships and what they do in the playoffs. That's hard because of seeding and everything else that goes into it. But we can give our record prediction, so we'll do that. Then we'll preview week one. It's here. Unbelievably, it is here, Richard. Five days away. Thrift, I am so excited. Week one in high school football. Yes, technically there's Thursday night games. And really, if you want to get technical, the Corky Kell Classic for Georgia is on Wednesday. So high school football is three days away. But for us to get started in that first game, it's five days away. And I cannot wait for it to get here. And you saw we posted this on our social media pages, Georgia Alabama Sports Live. Please like it. Invite people to like our page. Everything we do around the Tri-City area for Georgia and Alabama, any games we broadcast will be on this Facebook page and our YouTube channel that we'll be sharing uh, throughout the week this week so you can go and make sure you can get all the content we put out um, throughout the season. But with that said, I just think it's an awesome opportunity we're having this upcoming week to be able to live stream what should be a fantastic game. So that will be the first thing we break today. Pacelli, the defending GIAA 3A state champions, went 9-1 in the regular season last year, um, went finished the the total season at 11-1, winning the state championship against Stratford, 7-0 low-scoring game, also beat Brookstone uh, as well in the semifinal. This team under the coach of Dwight Jones, who's coached about anywhere and everywhere, it seems like, around the area. He is, the only thing he didn't have under his um, resume um, is winning a state championship, and he was able to do that last year. So they're coming in hot off a state championship, and they're playing on the road against a team that was state runner-up and the Glenwood Gators. They play in the AISA. That's the Independent um, Association for Private Schools in Alabama, Pacelli's in the one for Georgia, and they came in second place last year, losing to their rival Lee Scott in the state championship, but Coach Ryan Nelson, in his first season, left, I mean, took off where they left off from the previous three or four years under Coach Jason Gibson. He had wonderful runs, making all the way to the state championship. Never able to get over the hump, though. No. Glenwood's played in four state championship games since 2011, have not able to get that ring just yet. But this may be the year, and they got a great guy at the helm in Ryan Nelson. So you got Ryan Nelson, you got Coach Dwight Jones, you got Pacelli, defending state champions, you got Glenwood, state runner up, both from different states, going down this Friday, 8 p.m. at the Swamp. That's what they call uh, Glenwood's Field, Sammy Howard Field. That's what they call um, just, just kind of like the Florida Gators. They call it the Swamp, their area where they play. And we're excited to be live streaming. We need sponsors, and we'll talk about that at the end of the show, how you can be a sponsor for these broadcasts. But Richard, could not pick a better game to start off a high school showcase for the rest of the season. It is an absolute fantastic venue to call the first high school football game of the season. The Swamp, I called a couple games last year for Glenwood, and it's a great atmosphere. you got the, the student section. Just the Gator Walk is just an electric atmosphere, and they really have a great fan base there at Sammy Howard Field. And you know the Pacelli's fan base is going to make the trip across the river, and they're going to pack the visitor side of the swamp. And this is a rematch from the Week 1 game last year at Dimel Field where Pacelli ended up winning the game 28-13. I know that 
Jalen Turner had a touchdown that game. I mean, yep. he's no longer on the team. Cam Ellis has graduated as well. Yep. And Glenwood has lost some players too. Wide receiver Aaron Burton, JT Banks is not on the team. But Glenwood has the returning starting quarterback. And we talked a little bit of pre-show how important it is to have your returning starting quarterback back getting to know the system and the offense and improving as a passer. And I think that Dallas Crow is a mobile quarterback. He can throw the football down the field. But he could also make plays with his legs. And getting an opportunity to see Dallas Crow, I know that he is that player that's capable of making the big play for the Glenwood Gators. And we're going to talk about both these teams for their upcoming season. We weren't able to give a proper preview um, for them last week, so we are going to be able to do that this week. But the main news is we're going to be at the Swamp. 7 o'clock, we said 6 on the initial um, post that I made, but 7 o'clock is when game day is going to be live. Right. Um, and that's going to be where we give predictions for the upcoming games that day. So we'll talk about what games happen on Thursday, give them some limelight, talk about who won, who didn't win, and who had a great showing. Then on Friday, we're going to give our preview um, for the, the game that we're actually going to be at. Just like a typical college game day, we're going to call it high school game day. Um, and Richard, nice. he came up with the idea. Um, and it's something that I thought would be perfect for us to do. These students, these ath- these coaches, the fan base around the area, I just think it would be get such great interaction. So every school that we go at, whatever the school is for the game of the week, that is where we're going to have our game day, and we're going to do it on Fridays. Um, sometimes it'll be 6, sometimes it'll be 7. It'll be live on our Facebook page. It will also be live um, when we start doing our live streams. It'll be the first thing you see is the game day show. Then after the game day show will be our pre-game show from 7.30 to whatever time, um, 8 o'clock, which is this Friday for Glenwood. But sometimes games will be at 7.30. So 6.30 is when game day will start then. So make sure to tune in, check out everything that we have on our Facebook page, High School Game Day, this week, live at 7 o'clock, The Swamp. We want every fan, every student to show up and show out We'll have celebrity guest pickers. We'll have people that's going to pick the helmet, who they think is going to win. I think it's going to be such a fun time. And we will also pick all the games for Friday night. There's not a lot of games on Thursday. LaGrange plays. We talked about that, Richard, off air. And I think there's one other team. Chambers Academy plays Lee Scott Academy. Chambers out of, you know, 45 minutes from here, from Phoenix City. We'll talk about how they did on Thursday, but Friday, that's the first action for a lot of teams around the area. So we'll give our preview and our predictions, and also throughout the live stream, we will give updates. And Richard, I have his scoreboard updates and let you know who's winning and who's doing well on the road or wherever they may be. So looking forward to it. But high school game day, coming to your school sometime this year, I promise you, we're gonna try to hit every school we can. I know from Muskogee County, a lot of these schools, they don't have a home facility that they play their games at. So we'll be at Kinnett, we'll be at Otis Spencer or Memorial, wherever the game of the week is for that. But like Glenwood, Calvary, Brookstone, Pacelli, of course they play their games on campus. So we will have our game day on campus, Harris County as well. So high school game day is coming. And uh, just want to say thank you, Richard, for the idea. Awesome, awesome thing that's coming to the Tri-City area. And we really want this to be an event that you get excited about. And I can't think of a better place than the campus of Glenwood to have the student body there. We want them behind us and maybe holding up signs. I mean, there's some things we can get creative with. Maybe get the mascot behind yeah. us. We want cheerleaders. We want you know. signs. We want creative signs. We want it to be we like really a do. college game day. We really do. But yeah. for the high schools around this area. So high school game day Friday. Make sure to tune in. Myself, Richard, and we got a guest celebrity picker. We you won't know who that is till the actual show. So if you're a Glenwood Gator fan or student, if you're a Pacelli Vikings fan or student. See us at the Swamp at 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock. We'll we'll put that out there, that information. We want people to show up. And make sure to come and tune in to what should be a fantastic high school game day show right here on Georgia Alabama Sports Live Facebook page. Richard, it's going to be a fun one. We won't pick the uh, Pacelli or Glenwood. We will not pick that game. 
Of course. Because when you call a game, we want to be neutral as we are calling games for every school around this area. So we don't want people to think that we are biased. We are not. But that's why we have our celebrity guest picker to come on and be able and to pick gonna call who's going to win that yes. game, just like in college game day. So there's our special announcement. And uh, we appreciate everyone that's going to support us throughout the season. And we hope to see you on Friday night, Glenwood and Pacelli. Just a little background on week one in the GHSA. Remember, there are 12 weeks in the high school football season and 10 games. So teams will get double buys, but like the AHSAA, they don't start their games until technically week two. Wow. You're not going to see Central Russell County Smith right. Station until next week. But the AISA can play games early. That's why we get that Chambers Academy, Lee Scott Academy matchup on Thursday night. Traditionally, it's on Thursday night. Lee Scott won that game 34-0. They really made a statement against a very good Chambers Academy team. Carve of Atlanta, a 3A school, taking on the LaGrange Grangers on Thursday night. This incredible games on Friday. But Thrip, I really want to start with Carver at Hardaway. This game used to be a region contest. Yep. And it's a rivalry between two powerhouses in Columbus. And, you know, Carver, it was – last year, it was a very close game in the first half. It and was. Then, and then Carver ran away with it. This time, it's going to be at A.J. McClung. Carver went 9-3 and three last year. On Thursday. They yeah. went to the quarterfinals, lost to Oconee County. Right. That's going to be a big game. And then at Kennett Stadium, we have a rivalry game, the Northside Patriots – going up against the Columbus Blue Devils. And we're going to preview all these games right here on this show, and then we're also going to give our predictions for those games on Friday. Absolutely. Yes, we will give our predictions for games that we are not calling, but the game we do call, just like if you watch with College Game Day, we are not going to do that. Also, tomorrow, Glenwood has their coaches show, so make right. sure to tune in. Dusty Purdue will be hosting that. It'll be on the Glenwood Facebook page. We're also going to share it on Georgia Alabama Sports Live, so make sure to tune in then. Um, but we're excited being at Glenwood versus Bocelli, high school game day, a bunch of great games coming up. Should be a fantastic show and a great game as well on Friday. All right, moving on from that, we're going to give our predictions for this upcoming season for a majority of the teams around the Tri-City area. The first school we're going to start with is Harris County. Harris County is a team that I've always said is a sleeping giant. Yes. If they ever have the right season, because it being the only school in the county, and they are a 5A school, along with it Northside in this area, I think Harris County has the makings with Coach Watson for a 7-3, and 6-4 and four type season. I'm going to say 6-4. and four. Um, I'm going to be a little bit conservative, but I think that this year Harris County is definitely going to be buying for a region championship. They're going to give Northside a, a run for their money, and I expect them to make a decent run in the playoffs this year. Six and four is my prediction for Harris County. I'm predicting that Harris County is going to finish five and five. They are going to make the playoffs because in their region, four out of the five teams do make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I see them beating Drew, but Thrip, they got a tough schedule. They got to play Troop County week one. Yep. They got to play the defending 3A champion Sandy Creek on September 29th. Of course, Northside is a rivalry game. That's going to be a tough game. Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, I, well, I got them beating Shaw. I got them beating Howard. I, you know, I got them beating Russell County. I, I think they're going to improve from their 2-8 and eight season last year. Yeah. But under second-year head coach Tommy Watson. Remember, Levi Watson, the junior quarterback from last year's team, is coming back this year. No, he does not have Kobe Eskew. He was one of the top wide receivers in the state of Georgia. But I think that Harris County is going to improve. And I, I think they finished five and five. Five and five, six and four. Either way, that is an improvement from last year's two and eight record. And we move on from Harris County. We're going to go to their rival just south of them in northern Columbus, which is Northside. Last year, Northside went nine and one. Um, they had their best season in program and school history. They did come up against a juggernaut in the second round of the playoffs who had won four or five. How many like state champions? Two straight champions. And, yeah. they, and a team that I very underseated, and it's not unfair that North, uh, Northside had to play them in the second round because we were hoping at least in lead eight or final four run. They did lose Malachi Hosley, all right? and Malachi being the best running back in the city last year, phenomenal athlete, had over a thousand yards rushing. He was their workhorse. I do expect them to take a step back because you lose a leader like him and a playmaker on offense in Hosley, and then lose Raymond Deloach who was the premier linebacker in the city, 
went and signed with Air Force. That's a D1 college. That's how good of a player he was. You lose both of them, you're going to have a little bit of a setback. But with a guy like Andrew Orpeza and his staff, they're going to continue to sustaining success. Northside is a team that has always been on the rise, but they've had good seasons here or there, but continuing to be relevant every single year, we haven't seen from Northside. I expect that to happen this year in Coach Oropesa. I expect them to go 7-3 and three. Uh, in a tough region and being in five classification 5A. They are going to buy again for another region championship. 7-3 and three is the record I have for Northside. I've got Northside going 8-2. and two. I think the importance of Caden Clay coming back as the starting quarterback. And if you look up and down Northside's schedule, yes, they do play some rivals. They play Columbus. They play Hardaway. I have them losing to LaGrange, and I have them losing to McIntosh at the end of the season because McIntosh, that's on a, on a road field in, in Peachtree City. McIntosh is going to be a very tough team. And Northgate, although that game is going to be very close, I, I see Northside making the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to win the region. I think that McIntosh might be a little bit stronger. And who knows, Harris County might win this region. But I see, I see Northside going 8-2. and two. Yeah, same with me, Richard. And I think that Northside is a team that if all things go right, and Caden Clay, as I asked him during media day, if he starts cooking, he's, an, he's a great athlete. He can move outside the pocket. He's got one hell of an arm, no doubt about mm-hmm. that. I think that if they start throwing the ball over the field, Andrew Orpeza opens up the offense a little bit more since he's had experience as a freshman. Now he's going to his junior year, third year as a starter. I expect this offense to do great things. It may have a slow start, but eventually that's why I say 7-3. and three. They're going to get on a hot streak, and they're going to be vying maybe for another region championship. We go from Northside to Hardaway. And Coach Ryan McKenzie's got a really good team, Richard. He really does, and he has got a special quarterback. I cannot wait to see Bobby Gray play. As a freshman, he is going to be a playmaker. But Hardaway has a gauntlet of a schedule. If you look up and down their schedule, I mean, they got to play Troop County. They got to play Carver. They got to play Northside. They got to play Noonan, which is a 6A school up in Noonan, Georgia. Although I do have them beating Noonan, they still got to play Harris County and Peach County. I mean, if you look at their schedule, they have got a tough slate of non-region games. When you get to their region games, yes, I have them beating Westover and, you know, Shaw, that game could go back and forth, but, you know, you got Bainbridge and Cairo in their region, two yep. very tough teams. Yep. I have them going 2-8, and eight, but I have them making the playoffs huh. because there's five teams in their region, four make the playoffs. And so Hardaway's going to make the playoffs. I think Westover is going to be that team that's left out. So what does that tell you? That means that it looks like Shaw and Hardaway are going to make the playoffs in their region. I want to take a step further and say two and eight off of last year's two and eight season. Is it an improvement if they do make the playoffs? I guess it would be. I believe they will. I'm saying four and six. Okay. Because Coach McKenzie lit a fire in that Chatt- Chattahoochee County team the past two seasons. I expect them to do the same thing in Hardaway. And Hardaway is the type of team being four eight. Their talent is there, but sometimes. Under different leadership, it seemed like it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. I know a few years ago that Mikel Williams, who's playing at Georgia, that's right. a once-in-a-lifetime generational talent to come through Hardaway. But I still think there's enough talent there in the region they're in to 4-6, and 5-5 five and five is very manageable. And if that happens, Coach McKenzie's going to have a team in the next three or four years back to Hardaway standards back in the early 2000s when they were going 8-2, and 7-3 and three every single year under Coach Jeff Battle. So I like this Hardaway team a lot, a lot more than most people do coming right. in with a first-year coach in McKenzie because he isn't a, a guy that doesn't have experience. He does have experience being the, the lead man for Chattish County the last two years, making the playoffs, expecting him to come and do the same thing with Hardaway 4-6, Five and five. After going to Hardaway, let's go to a rival of theirs, which is Shaw. Shaw last year went four and six, made the playoffs. They got mollywopped by some of their their rivals. But Coach Blair Harrison decided he wanted to maintain just being the athletic director. That's a lot. Being AD and coach, all those that do do it, I commend you. But this Shaw team, you were really high on them, Richard, and you think Johnny Gardner is going to have Shaw back to. Maybe not the standards they were in the early 2000s winning state championships, but being competitive again. I, I sure do. You know, uh, Shaw started 2-0 last year. 
I feel they're going to start 2-0 again. They play Marion County. They play Kendrick. I got them losing to Harris County and Northside, beating Columbus and Shaw, and then winning their two region games, Westover and Hardaway, that will put them in the playoffs. Still in their region, Cairo and Bainbridge is the mm. standard. These are the juggernauts in their region. But Shaw has a favorable schedule because you're playing Columbus and Jordan. I think Harris County, that's going to be a very competitive game. Yep. And I actually got to witness Shaw in their scrimmage against Seminole County on Friday at Kennett Stadium. I loved what I saw. Even though they they were losing when I left, I loved them throwing the ball down the field and, and making plays. Yes, they're going to miss Jalen Bass. He was their leading rusher, almost rushed for 1,000 yards yep. last year. But... I think that I believe in what Coach Johnny Gardner is doing at Shaw. I do too, and I think six and four is a good record. Five and five is what I predicted. Um, it, it does take some time to build a culture True. and establish standards, and having guys believe in what was last year's offense, the wishbone, to now more of an up tempo, spread the ball over the field. They said they had a great off season. Coach Gardner's fired up. You like what you saw in the preseason. Five and five, I think, is still a one-game um, a, a progression from right. last year. I think that's manageable, and I think that's enough to get the Shaw Raider community fired up for what could be the future for this program under Coach Gardner. Five and five for me, six and four for Richard. Again, this is presented by Sports Vision. It's Georgia Alabama Sports Live. It's Richard. It's Thrift, and we're doing our uh, season prediction for the teams. We'll do our Week One preview, and then we're going to get out of here. The next team is a team that has a lot of great pedigree in history over the last 15 years. Won a state championship in 2007. Went to the state championship game back in 2021. And that is the Carver Tigers. Under head coach Pierre Coffey last year, they went 9-3. and 8-2 um, and two in the regular season, winning, excuse me, maybe 10-3 and three was the record. I know they, yes. they made it to the Elite Eight, so they won two playoff games. Lost in the Elite Eight. This team is young. Coach Coffey told me they have a lot of sophomores and juniors they are going to get a lot of action, even some upcoming freshmen he expects to see in some playing time. That's got to be scary for a lot of teams around the area because they went 8-2 and two last year with a young team. They're going to probably go 8-2, and two, what I'm predicting this year, and that means next year they're going to be the prohibitive favorite in one of the top teams, not just in this area, but in the state as well, in 3A. I like Coach Coffey. I like what his staff's done. I think Carver Columbus is going to go eight and two. I have got Carver going eight and two as well. Thrift and the two losses I have them losing. Brookwood is a seven A school that's on the road. It's a hostile environment. I got them losing to Crisp County, which is in Cordell, a hostile environment. Crisp <laughs> County has got a lot of talent, but the team that they lost to Thomasville last year it was a fifteen fourteen score. This was the determining factor for Carver not getting the number one seed. Carver did get the upset against Harlem last year, but they lost to Oconee County at home in the quarterfinals. I know we're not making our playoff predictions, but I feel that Carver's going to win some games in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and they're going to have an 8-2 and two record, but the future is bright for a team that has known for putting players in the NFL, like Isaiah Crowell, Brinston Buckner, yeah. Nate Odoms, DJ Jones. Yeah, and this is all guessing, guys. I'm giving it's, our best guesses. Yeah. So don't hold us accountable to this. Just like everyone that predicts, it is a prediction. You're assuming this is what's going to happen. Even with all the research that we have done, we don't know for sure what's going to happen with the majority of these teams. We can't account for injuries or anything else. So we're going to just give our best record moving forward. And each one of us, we're both picking teams to do a lot better than most people would. And if you look at the schedule, I'm trying to predict everyone making a progression from last year. And that includes the next team we're going to do, which is the Jordan Red Jackets. They're a team that wasn't even going to be a program three years ago. Coach Goodell Jenkins comes in, lights a fire in them, wins some awards. And yeah, they didn't win a game last year, but they got better each and every week. He revamped his staff. And I think Jordan's going to get their first win in three or four years. I think they're going to go one and nine this year. Richard, what about you? I'm predicting that they're going to go one and nine this year as well. But it's going to be a win against a region opponent, Central of Macon. And I, I look, I, I was looking at the schedule, Central of Macon, Kendrick played him close. You know, I know that Jordan had a tough sledding last year, and uh, I think Jordan is going to score some points this year. They are going to be competitive. I mean, we're going to see a different Jordan team. This is a, still a young team, and this is also a team where Coach Jenkins got the starting fullback to come out of 
the the wrestling mat and and actually put on the pads and and he's going to be a playmaker and we're going to see a different Jordan team and, and I I agree they're going to get their first win this year. Jordan Red Jackets, you will hear more from them in the next years to come. Coach Cadell Jenkins is building something that everyone should be proud of, especially the resources are not there, their lack thereof for Jordan and I know it's a lot to overcome, but winning a game this year I think that's almost getting to the state championship for most teams. Absolutely. I think that would be awesome. Moving from another 2A school that is their rival is the Kendrick Cherokees. Last year under first-year coach Robert Martin, um, didn't have a great season, 2-8. and eight. But he had to establish a culture. Again, Kendrick in the same boat as Jordan. They were getting the mantra of a team that just didn't care. They didn't have winning ways. And Coach Andre Dye, the AD there, he said, you know what, I'm going to bring in a guy that believes in the Cherokees and can get the Cherokees back to where they were in the 90s, which they won a state championship 30 years ago. It's not like it's never happened for Kendrick. I think they're going to go 4-6, and 5-5 five and five this year, and I think they're going to make the playoffs, which would be a huge improvement. I don't remember the last time Kendrick made the playoffs. It's got to be going on 10 to 15 years ago. So if they even sniff coming close to the playoffs, I think that's a home run for Coach Martin and the Kendrick Cherokees. Tell me, what do you think about it, Richard? I, what do you got for the Kendrick Cherokees? I've got Kendrick going four and six. I don't have them making the playoffs, and here's why. They're in a region where you have eight teams. There's eight teams in their region, which means that only four make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You pretty much know that Spencer is going to make it. Yeah. Ace Charter is probably going to make it. Northeast and Southwest. Those are going to be the four teams that are going to make the playoffs. I do think that Kendrick is going to be competitive. In fact, when I was looking at the schedule, I see them beating Seminole. I think that they're going to play Shaw very tough at Otis Spencer Stadium. I got them beating Central Amacan. I got them beating Jordan. And I also got them beating Heritage School, which is a GIAA school up in Noonan. I think that Kendrick is going to show signs of improvement. I think that Coach Robert Martin is really going to have this team not quite to the level of the 1992 state championship led by running back Del McGee, but I think that Kendrick is in the right path to compete and make the playoffs for years to come as well. I think so as, as well, and I'm excited about Coach Martin and what the Kendrick Cherokees have for this upcoming season. The Columbus Blue Devils have the longest tenured head coach in the area and Phil Marino. He had a lot of health problems last year, and we're glad that he's back because he's a guy that's been – He's meant a lot to a lot of people around this area, and I'm, I'm excited to see Columbus High being competitive again. Do I expect them to win a region championship? No. Do I expect them to struggle like they have in years past? Yes. But I'm going to say 3-7. and seven. I'm, I'm going to say 3-7, and 4-6 and six is a good record for the Columbus Blue Doubles. Again, this is not a team that's bringing in Division I talent at the football level, as you know, for baseball, a little bit different. But doesn't stop how competitive they are. Doesn't stop how hard Coach Marino coaches. And I think these Blue Devils teams are going to be competitive. They'll be in a lot of games. And who knows, if a ball bounces here or there, they could manage a 500 season. I'm going to say 3-7. and seven. I do agree. I have them at 2-8, and eight, but they're going to be very competitive in some of these games. I have them beating Jordan and Manchester. That Shaw game is going to be very close. Uh, the two teams in their region, you really got to watch out for them because they're middle-of-the-road teams, is Doherty and Monroe. We know the top of the region is going to be Thomasville, Carver, and Crisp County. Can Columbus sneak wins against Doherty and Monroe and sneak into the playoffs? Remember, there are six teams in their region, so only four make the playoffs. Two are going to stay home. And I think that Columbus, because they have the longest tenure coach, their starting quarterback is returning, they're going to be in some games. And I think that that first game week one when they take on Northside, that's going to be a test to see if Columbus is competitive. If they're in that game against Northside, then it's a whole different ballgame. We know that Columbus is going to be competitive and they're going to have a great season. Yeah, in Columbus, we're hoping to do that Columbus-Jordan game. 
Moving on from them, uh, we touched on Shaw, we touched on Kendrick. The last Muscogee County school we're going to hit on is Spencer. You got them going 8-2. and two. I got them going 9-1. and one. I'm just going to say it, Gary Gaither. That's it. That's all I have to say for Spencer. He was the, one of the leading passers in the state last year. He's coming back. The offense has a ton of skill set players. Joe Kegler's got a team that's going to win another region championship. I expect him to win it. 9-1, and 8-2. and two. Richard, how about you very quickly? I'm guessing since you have them 9-1, and one, you have them losing to Carver? I'm yes. Like, okay, so I got them losing to You just to wanted Carver. to throw me out there. You just wanted oh, to put the Carver out there. <laughs> Spencer, I think it's going to be a close game. But it is. It's going to be great. For everyone that says you got to see it with your eyes before you believe it. I have to see it first, but I think it's going to be a competitive game. All right, now Spencer, don't get mad at me. I have them losing to Ace Charter because that is on the road. I remember how competitive of that game was last year at yeah. Spencer Stadium. It was just a slugfest. Gary Gaither, he is going to be setting passing records. He's probably going to be the 2A player of the year. And I've got the Spencer Green Wave going to the quarterfinals. I think that they are going to make a run in the 2A playoffs. So we're both very high on Spencer. I, I'm high on Spencer. Player. I think 8-2, and two, but they're going to get I – th- I still think they win the region. And I, th- I think they get the number one seed. They had a tough number one seed last year playing Barry and – Barry was a four seed. That that was just a shootout. I think that Spencer has an easier path. And who knows? They might end up meeting Callaway in the quarterfinals. Wouldn't that be a dream matchup? But I, I really love what Spencer can do in 2A. Yep, Spencer Green Waves. That's all the Muscogee County schools. We're going to now move on to the four pro- the private schools. Pacelli, defending state champions that we talked about um, early in the broadcast. I think they're going to go 7-3. and three. It's taking a step back because when you lose a, a senior quarterback in Cam Ellis, you lose your, your senior leader on defense in J.J. Thornton, sometimes you are going to have to take a step back, especially early in the year. 7-3, and 8-2, and two, still being one of the top teams in the GIAA. Quickly, Richard, what do you got for Pacelli? I have Pacelli going to 7-3 as well. I'm not going to go into detail on who they're going to lose to because that could be giving away some right. picks for games down the road. But... Pacelli, going to do great in the GIAA playoffs, uh, but you know the tough teams in the GIAA, Stratford Academy and, and Brookstone and Ta- uh, First Presbyterian Day. I mean, yeah. you know those teams are going to be there as well, but I think Pacelli can go 7-3 and three and make a run in the GIAA playoffs. Junior quarterback Christian Brown is going to be leading the team. He was a phenomenal basketball player. He was the backup last year to Cam Ellis. Senior receiver AZ Justy, he is an incredible athlete. The man can jump out the gym also jump out the field. He is a premier receiver looking to go D1, D2. You're going to hear a lot of great things from AZ Jussie. Expect him to get the ball a lot. Um, the heartbeat of the team is with senior Desi Morgan, who's a versatile fullback, and he's going to be the uh, leader on the defense, overtaking for what J.J. Thornton did last year. I think this team's got a lot of great talent. They do have to replace their lead running back with Corvey James, but they expect him to be a scat back that gets a lot of touches. This Pacelli team's got talent. They're young, just like we say with some of the teams around the area, but they still have a lot of great um, skilled players to surround Christian Brown, the new starting quarterback. And anytime Coach Jones is leading the team, we expect great things. So that's Pacelli. Now we're going to talk about the team that they're playing this upcoming week, which is the Glenwood Gators. I got them going 8-2. and two. You talked about it with Dallas Crow. We don't have to mention too much with the Gators because their team is loaded. They return a lot from last year. They do lose Aaron Burton. They're a leading receiver, but they return Dallas Crow, one of the best quarterbacks in the ISA, and Coach Nelson is very high on him. I expect the Gators to go 8-2, and 9-1 and one around that area and being one of the best teams in the ISA and hopefully, finally, bringing that coveted state championship football trophy home. I have Glenwood going 8-2 and two as well. Remember, last year they started 0-2. In fact, they were 2-3. and three. They lost to Lee Scott Academy very early. They, they still got to play all those teams. Pacelli, Brookstone, Lee Scott Academy. They got a tough Chambers Academy matchup, the final game of the regular season. That's a non-region game. But still, I have them going 8-2. and two, And uh, we'll see what they do in the AISA playoffs. And we're going to talk more about them and Pacelli on Friday. That's going to be predominantly what the show is based around is that game. So for all you Glenwood fans, we will be talking about them thoroughly heading into high school game day show on Friday, and then, of course, the live stream of Pacelli versus Glenwood, a border war showdown of all showdowns. Excited about that. Moving on from them, we're going to go to Brookstone. Brookstone lost their starting quarterback, Andrew Alford. He is now with the Central Red Devils. 
but they got a guy, as we talked about last week, coming in that they expect great things out of. I like this Brooks Hill team a lot. Um, I, shout out um, to Chris, uh, my man. I can't, Chris, oh my goodness, I just drew a blank right there because I have all the information blasted in my head. Um, but I expect these, these Brookstone Cougars to go 8-2. and two. What about you, Richard? Well, when you have a coach in Rance Gillespie who's been a quarterback whisperer, and yes, they lose offer. Chris but, Thornton. Yes. And you, you, have, you have Chris Vickerson. Vickerson. Great, great Thor- tight end. Uh, why don't you just correct me? And, and oh, his yeah. mom's going to get me for that. I don't know why I said Chris Thornton. I literally just drew a blank with all the information I got in my head. But Chris Vickerson, I saw him in, um, against Ch- Chattahoochee County. They were playing in their scrimmage game, and he was someone that looked unguardable. And he's going to be playing tight end receiver. He's playing defensive end. You know Coach Gillespie's going to want a lot of touches for them. Should be a lot of fun seeing what happens with this Brookstone team. I expect 8-2, and two, them and Brookstone being the top two teams in their region. Them I, and Pacelli. I have Brookstone going 7-3, and three, so we're, we're not too far off. And uh, Brookstone's going to compete for a GIAA championship. I mean, it, I don't know if we can have Brookstone and Pacelli in the final, but expect them to play in the postseason. It would have been awesome. We saw them play yeah. in the Elite Eight in basketball. Yeah. We saw them play in the Final Four in football. So these two teams are rivals. And Brookstone, definitely, they are looking at trying to get any revenge. They're hungry. And they talked about that Pacelli game is circled. Um, but that's later on down in the season. Calvary. Got a new coach in Emmanuel Brunson. They play in the Gaps Association 3A. Uh, Lucas Luke Savick, uh, I think it's Savick or Savick. If we mispronounce your name, we'll promise you we'll try to get it right. He's coming in as the leader for this team. Coach Brunson saying he's had an incredible offseason working, getting better. Calvary, it's going to be some growing pains, but in the league they're playing in, it allows them to have those growing pains early. They do play, and we'll talk about this for week one, the defending state champions. But I expect Calvary to go 6-4, and four, make it to the playoffs, and laying a foundation under Coach Brunson's first season. Thriv, I have them going 7-3, and three, and, and I actually have them losing to Cherokee Christian week one, the defending GAPS champions. They have to play a GIAA school. they got to play Heritage. Yeah, I think that's going to be a tough game. The Kings Academy... I mean, we saw them in the championship game for baseball. You know that they're good in football. Right. Uh, the Gaps do have some good teams, but I'm going to see that Calvary is going to improve from their 6-6 six and six season last year. They mm-hmm. did make the playoffs last year, but it's tough to replace a star running back in Jaden Mason. And so, But they're going to find ways. I think that Coach Brunson is going to do a good job developing these players because that's what he's known for, and I think that Calvary – is going to go seven and three and, and have a have a good season. Probably, you know, they're going to make the gaps playoffs. Maybe win a playoff game, but you know, the future is bright for Calvary. If the predictions go the way we have them, everybody's going to be having a better season oh, yeah. than they did last year. Of so course. we're hoping for the best for every school around the area. We're going to hit on Central Smith Station, Russell County, real quickly. We'll just give quick predictions. Central, obviously, one of the top teams in seven A. Coach Nix with Andrew Alford, the number one player in the state, Cam Coleman. Central going 9-1. and one. I think they may bring it home this year. This is going to be the season we see Central bring in a state championship. Smith Station, I think they go back to the way they were in 2021. Last year was a bit of a down year. I think they go 6-4, and 7-3. And, and Russell County, same thing, 3A school. They had a great season with Coach Griggs in 2021. Last year, expectations, we saw them go 2-8. and eight. This year, 6-4, and four, back the way they were in this first season. Those are my uh, record predictions for the three Alabama schools um, in the Tri-City area. I'm with you, Thrift. Uh, Central is – I feel they're going to they're gonna dethrone Thompson and win the state championship. First championship since 2018. First championship for head coach Patrick Nix. Well, someone's got to dethrone Thompson. Yes, Thompson's – they've, they've won the state championship four times. And, Unreal. And Opelika gets to play them in, in the beginning of the season. And then Thompson turns around and play, plays IMG Academy. Yeah. Goal is we would love to be able to do Central Gaines 
those seven A schools, they're hard to get a hold they of. They really are. Um, but make sure to go out and show support. Central, one of the best teams in the state of Alabama and in this area. So we expect great things with them. And Smith Station and Russell County, we expect them both to improve on from last year. I know you're really high on Russell County. Absolutely. I got Russell County going 5-5. Five and five. Uh, Head coach Dylan Griggs entering his third season. He's got a special running back. Kelston Popcorn Tarver. I love that nickname. Popcorn. Because he just pops out of the backfield and – he also has a two-quarterback set, Mitchell Green and Robert Calhoun. Mitchell Green's more of a passer. Robert Calhoun is more of a uh, dual-threat quarterback. But I think that he's going to go with the two-quarterback system. He's got to replace two different coordinators. He lost the defensive coordinator, Kendall Lacey, to Valdosta High School. Justin Albert is now at Pell City. So he's got two brand-new coordinators. But I believe in what Coach Griggs is doing at Russell County. Five and five, but they are in a tough region. I don't see them making the playoffs because they still got to play teams like Pike Road, Wetumpka, Carver Montgomery. Yep. But I got them beating Stanhope Elmore, Park Crossing. I got them beating Valley. And we'll find out and see how good this Russell County team is next week when they play Harris County. They did beat Harris County down in Seal, Alabama, but this time this game is in Hamilton, Georgia. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how Russell County plays out as I am with all the schools. Also, shout out to Chip Siegel and the Lynette Panthers. We won't get into them as much, and I'm hoping that we could manage maybe get one game with Lynette. Cause oh, that would be great. Coach Siegel's my guy, and I love him to death, and I expect the Lynette Panthers to – remember, they won two state champions in 2017 and 2019. They're going to be vying again for 2A. Lynette Panthers are on the rise, and under first-year head coach, one of my ghost friends, Chip Siegel, Expect good things out of them. Let's do week one preview real quickly, Richard. I'm just going to hit one, quick hitters. Um, Carver and Hardaway, obviously last year was a blowout. Hardaway should be competitive maybe in the first half, but I expect Carver to dominate. We'll give our predictions later on Friday, but that's going to be a game to see a test for Carver where they're heading this year. Are they the juggernaut we think, and is Hardaway going to prove on from last year? And is Bobby Gary going to be that special player we think he's going to be? And remember, he's only a freshman. He's a freshman. We get to see him four more years. This is a or three more years after this season. I really, I, I really wish this was, this was a region game. But unfortunately, with the reclassification, this cannot be a region game. And this was a game last year that was very competitive in that first half. Hardaway is going to improve under new first year head coach Ryan McKenzie, and a, a rivalry renewed. I know it's a non region game, but. Anytime Carver plays Hardaway, it's always great, and it's going to be at Memorial Stadium. Memorial Stadium on Friday. Uh, another game, Northside at Columbus. This is going to be at Kinnett. Northside coming off the region championship last year. Columbus trying to see if they're going to improve on what was a decent season, but you know a lot of things they had to overcome with Coach Marino's health. It should be a good test for both teams. Obviously, I think everyone's leaning towards Northside. Again, we'll give our predictions on Friday on the high school game day show. But that's going to be another great game. Shaw at Marion County. Marion County went 2-9 last year. Shaw should get off the start out the gate hot, and we're hoping they get a big-time win at Marion County. So both of those games should be highly competitive heading into week one. I really like this Shaw matchup. Marion County came to Connect Stadium last year. Shaw ended up getting the win. Uh, but Shaw is traveling to Buena Vista, and it's not that far away. Hopefully the Shaw faithful will make that trip. I always love these uh, matchups in these small towns because it seems like the entire town of Buena Vista it's gonna the, shut down is going to shut down the whole town. That's how it should be on a Friday night, Absolutely. Richard. Um, so Harris County, they're on the road, and they're playing a team in Tanner Glisson and the oh, Troop County Tigers. Juggernaut. 12-2 and two last year, lost in the semifinal. That is a... It's a big time test for the Harris County Tigers, and we both expect them to improve on last year, going Absolutely. six and four. Um, both of us predicted six and four, seven and three. This is one of the games that I think we both they may fall, but if they can stay competitive, I think that that momentum, even they, even if they lose, if they can stay competitive and stay within reach for majority of the game. I think that's something to build off of for the rest of the season. Should be a good one in Troop County. These are two rivals because they're close in proximity. Right. As Troop County is the only county, in, um, not the only school in Troop County, but it's the premier school in Troop County. And Harris County, obviously, the only high school in Harris County. These two rivals, only about 20 minutes apart, should be a good one on Friday night. I cannot wait for this one. Troop County, one of the favorites to win the 4A state title. They got Teo Todd coming back, the commit to Georgia Southern. And they got... 
players on, according to Rivals.com, who are top players in the country, including Noah Dixon, who is a talented four-star safety. All you had to say was Teo and Todd. Teo Todd, a that human highlight field. That yeah. is, and like Rex Casillo said, that guy was going to put on highlights no matter who he plays for at the next level, and he's going to have a great season. This is his senior year. It's a senior and year. And this is the year Coach Glisson thinks that he's going to get his Troop County Tigers over the hump and into the state championship. One of the last few games we're going to talk about, Greenville at Spencer. Greenville went 2-7. and seven. Spencer, obviously, region champs. I think it's going to be a tune-up game for that Carver-Spencer game that's looming the next week. I think Spencer dominates. We'll talk about that on Friday as well, but I think we are, we both agree. Spencer looking to start off hot again with that week one matchup against Greenville. I really believe that Spencer is going to show that they were the team that won the region championship for the first time in the GHSA last year. And Gary Gayfair, he's just going to put up numbers. I cannot wait to see this. It, you know, The home opener, Spencer finally gets to open at Otis Spencer Stadium. I know that that stadium didn't open until late October last year, but we get a full season of Otis Spencer Stadium and Thrift for the first time in a Friday night in Columbus. Three high school football games will be going on. Excited is an understatement. And uh, it really is. we're going to try to be anywhere and everywhere to broadcast and live stream these games. If you're just now joining us, Thrift Barringer, Richard Orgers, George Alabama Sports Live. Coming up, we will be the game of the week for this week, Pacelli versus Glenwood. Pacelli, the reigning state champions in Georgia. Glenwood, the reigning runner-up in Alabama for AISA. They're playing at the Swamp. We'll have a high school game day show that's going to get predictions for all the games around the area, just like college game day. Me and Richard will be at the Swamp for that one. And then the next week, we got great games. We've got Harris County, Russell County, Carver, Spencer, Pacelli, Tattnall Square. We're going to be at two of those three locations. Looking forward to that. Thank you to Coach Minnie Johnson and all the ADs that support what we do and are excited for us coming to their school to live stream the games. And uh, these coaches and players, they definitely deserve it. Calvary takes on Cherokee Christian. Calvary went 500 last year, did make the playoffs. New coach, new regime, but they got a tough one in that first one against Cherokee Christian, who went 11 and 2, won the Gaps Gaps three uh, 3A state championship, and they're the favorite again to win it this year. I don't expect Calvary to come out as a winner. It would be a surprise to me. I'm hoping and cheering that they do. Um, but it would be a good test for Coach Brunson to see where his team's at at the beginning of the season to where they want to be towards the end. Yes, this is a very tough matchup because it's a road game in a hostile environment, and Cherokee Christian is the defending Gaps champions. And I just want to see if Calvary Christian can get competitive, and Coach Brunson, with his new philosophy and these players are buying into his program, and and we're going to end up seeing a lot of improvement from a Calvary Christian team that did go 6-6 six and six last year. If you're just now joining us, we have been talking all things predictions. We gave predictions for each of the teams around the Tri-City area. That includes all eight Muscogee County schools, Harris County, Carver. I mean, not Harris County and Carver. Carver's part of Muscogee County, but Harris County, Central, Simmons Station, Russell County, Glenwood, Calvary, Brookstone, Pacelli. All 17 of those teams that I just mentioned – we touched on even Lynette. We gave them a shout out too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you missed that when we end this broadcast, go back, check it out, see what our predictions were. We were very uh, lenient for a lot of teams. We expect great things for every team around here. We try to pick the best, not the worst case, but the best case scenario for them. The last game we're going to talk about is this one. Quick preview as we talked about at the beginning of the show. Defending state champions, runner up. Last year when they played, Pacelli won by two at Pacelli. That game I went to, it went down to the wire. I expect something similar at Sammy Howard Field, uh, Sammy Howard Field at the Swamp. Richard, any last words you want to give on the game before we head out of here um, for tonight's George Alabama Sports Live show? Well, Thrift, if it's anything like the game that was at Dimel Field last year where the Glenwood fans – came to Pacelli and packed the visitor's side. These are two passionate fan bases, Mm -hmm. and I cannot wait for these two fan bases to be at the swamp, and hopefully both fan bases will be there for our our high school game day. Yeah, I almost said college game day. And we don't want just 
Glenwood fans. We want Pacelli fans. We want anyone that can show up and show out during our high school game day show, 6 o'clock next week. Excited about it. It also will be re-aired on our broadcast at 7 o'clock. So if you missed the live version, you can see it again at 7 o'clock as well. Me and Richard, we're going to have our celebrity guest figure. We're talking with Coach Nelson as well. Should be a lot of fun predicting all these week one games. But with that said, we do need support from you businesses out there and people that are in the community. We need um, help being able to do these. And if you would like to be a sponsor, that includes getting mentions throughout the show, graphics of your said business, um, commercials. If you have a 30-second commercial, we can put it in the live stream. Contact me or Richard Holdridge. We would love for you to be a premier sponsor throughout the season. Excited to do over 20 games for all the schools that we have talked about throughout today's show and uh, last Sunday's. So thank you again, Richard. It's been another great show. Really has. We're excited about it. Don't hold us uh, against us with all these predictions that we did. Um, but we are excited to be at Glenwood and Pacelli on Friday. Monday, you'll see the Glenwood Coaches Show. I'll also be interviewing Coach Nelson and Coach uh, Jones throughout the week to preview what's going to happen on Friday. So make sure to tune. Like our Facebook page, Georgia Alabama Sports Live. Like us on YouTube as well. And thank you all so much for tuning in. And I'm even going to play some music to play us out, um, which I think every game day or every show has got to have some music to be able to do that. From Thrift and Richard, we'll see you on Friday for Pacelli versus Glenwood in our high school game day show.